over a planet steeped in the greatest financial collapse in modern history and perhaps even a greater geopolitical crisis. On Monday, October 24th, the continental United States was treated to a beautiful solar show when red auroras lit up the nighttime sky, reaching as far south as the states of Texas and Alabama. However, these auroras, as stunning as they are, really serve more as a warning sign as to what profound changes may be going on out here in our planet's true environment, space. And frankly, by referring to it as space, lets on just how little we know about what's going on out here. This adds a whole new dimension to our strategic crisis, a threat that some leading government officials are beginning to pay attention to. These auroras remind us that we are living deep within an integrated system of solar activity, which itself is nested in the dense activity of a changing galactic system. What we witnessed on the night of October 24th was the result of a coronal mass ejection, or CME, a singularity in the constant stream of energized particles and radiation flowing from the sun throughout the solar system. This continuous flux of solar activity interacts with the Earth's magnetic field, producing the structure known as the Earth's magnetosphere. But when the sun releases these singular outbursts of large plasma structures from the corona, they can have large-scale effects on the Earth's electromagnetic environment. Almost three days prior, on October 22nd, a Class M 1.3 solar flare, a moderate flare, erupted from the sun, sending a CME traveling over 2 million miles per hour towards the Earth. According to spaceweather.com, the CME was so geo-effective because it contained a knot of south-pointing magnetic fields. These fields partially canceled Earth's north-pointing magnetic field at the equator, allowing solar wind plasma to penetrate deeply into the Earth's magnetosphere. Look at this in the infrared. As Peter Martinson has developed over the last several weeks in the LPAC weather reports, one approach to better understand these phenomena is understanding the sun's cycles and the greater galactic cycles that affect those solar cycles. Because the fact of the matter is that had the CME that grazed the planet last Monday hit us head on, the effects of the subsequent geomagnetic storm may have been much more extreme than simply lighting up the nighttime sky. As Peter has warned, while there are a host of factors that can influence the sun's behavior, many of which are still just hypotheses, what we do know is that the sun is only halfway to its 11-year solar maximum, typified by what we've seen with a greater density of sunspots as the CME we just experienced. Such solar outbursts, if large enough, pose a serious threat to our electrical and electronic infrastructure. Two concerns sit highest on the list. First, the ability of the solar outbursts to blind or even damage or destroy crucial satellites. And second, the ability of the CMEs to induce large surges of electrical currents in the ground and into our electrical grid, destroying vital electrical transformers. But how big of a threat do these angry fits of solar activity represent? A year ago, individuals from the Department of Defense, the Department of Energy, and the White House prompted an investigation into these threats, which included a conference held at the nation's capital on October 6th, titled Severe Space Weather Threats to the National Electric Grid. The emphasis of the conference was to figure out the probability of and what we would do in the event of a coronal mass ejection that could cause a geomagnetic storm strong enough to take out a significant part of our nation's electricity grid. The conference's conclusion? Yes, this kind of event is very possible. In fact, it is not a matter of if, but when it will happen. And no, we are not at all prepared. Some of the figures are staggering. Dr. John Kappenman from Meditech Corporation published a report revealing that the large transformers in our electrical transmission systems, because of their size, are the most vulnerable to damage or destruction. And what's worse, we don't even produce them in the United States anymore. As it stands right now, there is an 18-month wait to order, produce, and deliver a single one of these vital components from the two nations that still produce them, Germany and South Korea. If a large number needed replacement at the same time, the situation would be much worse. This led to the obvious conclusion, which resounded throughout the remainder of the conference, that were the planet hit by a serious CME, large areas of our nation would be without electricity for months or years as power companies struggle to purchase and replace damaged hardware. 
Once that was laid on the table, the attempts to answer the questions the audience began to ask made it clear that it wasn't just the featured experts that were coming up short on how to answer these questions. The implications presented posed a magnitude of danger that no nation has ever dealt with. There are things that can be done to harden our electrical infrastructure, and NASA and NOAA have plans to expand our satellite systems, monitoring, and scientific systems to begin to understand and forecast these solar events. But those are options for a nation with a functioning president, which we don't have. This brings us to the geopolitical crisis, the context in which the conference was taking place. Just as our daily activity here on the planet isn't happening in a vacuum, neither are these solar and galactic evolutions. And despite our imperfect knowledge of the principles at play, we have enough evidence to know the threat is real. Therefore, dismantling our ability to forecast these events by stripping funding to needed satellite operations and crippling NASA, our federal space agency, is a winning crime against the United States, particularly when as early as a year ago, the White House knew that this existed as a serious threat. If this president, who has now set a precedent for the extrajudicial murder of American citizens and foreign leaders, really wanted to save lives and protect democracy and defend people's freedom, then he would be working with the major nations of the planet and not against them. To restate the point, these auroras and shadows in the form of severe weather and eruption of the rim of fire we've received throughout the year are warnings. And while the potential of an outbreak of general warfare is a real possibility in today's geopolitical storm, it doesn't have to be. As it stands, the threat of space weather trumps pretty much every political, social, diplomatic, and scientific crisis we've ever experienced. In fact, in the context of this report, we are more vulnerable because we are not working with Iran, China, or Russia on a strategic defense of the planet. Again, there absolutely are things that we can do and must do to better protect ourselves and better understand the world in which we live, but not with Obama as president.